What's going on traders? It's Ricky with Tech Book Solution. So I am back now in Arizona. It feels so good to actually be back, um, back in the States. And best of all, I just had canes. So I, I was craving it so much since uh, I was in Spain for about two and a half weeks. Um, so it's really nice to be back. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there's going to be about, um, or this is my first official week now back um, in the States and I'm going to be able to trade live with you guys. And, um, hopefully we, we stop encountering all those issues that we're encountering um, the days before just because of the different time change. So I want to thank you guys all for tuning in. It looks like you guys are tuning in, um, um, joining our live stream for the first time. For those that are joining us, uh, joining us for the first time, um, so this is our Sunday Stock Talk. Um, I have a group. It's TechFood Solutions. Now we're a community of almost 20, 28,000 members worldwide. Um, the link is provided, you, uh, provided for you down below. If you guys want to join our Facebook group, you simply have to have a Facebook account. Um, once you join our group, on the top pinned post, um, there's a series of group chats that you have available. And what we utilize those group chats are to share best practices, share mistakes, and then just continue asking questions. Um, and really, just uh, conversations 24-7 um, is really what we hold um, within those live chats. So make sure you guys utilize that to the fullest potential. Um, but I know it's the weekend. I know um, it's going to be uh, just an, oh, it's a longer week uh, because of the 4th of July and stuff like that. So I, I want to make sure that I don't take too much of your guys' time. I'm going to make this pretty uh, quick and easy for you guys. We have everything set up. So I'm going to start sharing my screen in just a minute. Um, and I just want to let you guys know, um, for those that are joining us and don't know how we actually uh, kind of do things here, um, pretty much I recap last week's trading. So um, talk about, you know, some things that we did good, uh, some things that I saw within the group, you know, some areas of improvement. Um, and then we're going to talk about some stocks that, you know, the, within the group of TechFoot Solutions that you guys are recommending. So simply I put up a poll option um, and everyone within TechFoot Solutions or uh, a number of people um, select the top five, you know, posts or options uh, for me to perform a technical analysis on. So we're going to focus on that. So that's already set. Um, and then I just answer and dedicate about five minutes to any of your guys' questions. So um, that, that's, that's really just it. Let me start sharing my screen so you guys can see exactly what it is that I'm talking about and we can go from there. Um, but let's go ahead. And, um, so all I did was I searched the poll. Um, I up opened this poll about nine hours ago. It looks like these are the top five stocks that we're going to be analyzing today. Um, and then we're just going to go from there. Uh, but other than that, that's really just it. I don't know if you guys have checked out one of my latest videos. Um, it's for the making of the millionaire. So we do have a series of when I either interview or just kind of talk about some best practices um, of actual millionaires, um, such as the one that we just did um, yesterday. So feel free to click on this. I did this with my buddy Graham. Um, amazing guy, super funny guy. Um, so I think you guys will really enjoy that. But let's go ahead and get right to it. So I'm going to start um, just performing the technical analysis just to get – through it. So if you guys want to get back to your families um, after this, I'll let you guys go. Um, and then I'll start talking about uh, kind of like recapping last week. So let's do DXTR. Um, I want to make sure that you guys understand me performing technical analysis. It's just my whole thought process in no way. Um, one of the biggest things, uh, give me one second, DXTR. One of the biggest things when it comes to trading, um, and it's something that we express um, very deeply within TechWood Solutions. And it's, you know, you only trade what you understand. You want to make sure that you dedicate a lot of time to understand the basics and the fundamentals of trading. Um, and I have a series of helpful videos within my YouTube channel that you guys can utilize. Uh, but there's so much more information and content out there that I really think that you guys can learn from as well. Um, and then if you guys watch any of my videos of like how to get started, what brokerage company to, you know, um, use a series of just different, just the frequently asked questions, just be sure to, you know, type in your question within the search bar of, um, YouTube and then just put my name right next to it and then there should be probably a video that I've made already answering that question um, but I'm gonna talk a little bit more about and where was I going with this I just had a brain fart um, so DXTR I'm gonna start trading my screen so you guys can see exactly what it is that I'm talking about oh but when it comes to trading I'm just sharing my best practice I'm just sharing my whole thought process. Um, people usually find the way that I analyze um, stocks to be um, pretty easy and, and easy to understand. So they just want like a secondhand opinion. I want to make sure that you guys understand that, you know, if it doesn't make sense to you on what it is that I'm saying, if you guys don't see the value of what it is that I'm talking about, um, then you should never trade in what you don't understand or what you don't see value. And that's one of the biggest things. Never trade based on anyone else's opinion. So I want to make sure that we guide you guys in the right direction. Um, and the best way to be successful when it comes to investing in anything is to be able to manage your risk and to always have a plan before jumping in. So understanding where to buy, where to sell, and then where to cut losses. And if you don't understand that already, um, then you might want to take, you know, a couple, 
or you might want to take some time uh, to understand that and, and kind of develop yourself as a trader uh, because again there's no reason to rush into it really just you know try to learn the most you can be the best you possibly can be and then you know start testing the waters and stuff like that so that's personally what I would suggest um, but let me go ahead and again start sharing my screen and uh, DXTR, this is one that has been popping up within our group chat quite often. I'm guessing because it's, um, if I'm not mistaken, let me do a five-day analysis. No, uh, ten-day analysis. Um, so it came from lows of 20 cents, highs of. It pretty much looks like there's a resistance at about 36. So we can call the resistance there that it doesn't hold very well above 36. It has gone above it, but yet it doesn't hold very well. So it's at least hit 36 one, two, three, four, and almost five times. It looks like it has a pretty solid support more in this area right here. Um, it looks like the pullbacks that it usually has uh, is around 26 uh, to about 25. Um, yeah, I'd say 25 actually. Um, so pullback at 25, another support here at 28. Um, and then again, it, it, and, and this is why I, I want to make sure that I talk about that I don't trade stocks that are less than $1. Um, I find them a little bit too risky, and I tend to see more red days um, than green days when it comes to trading stocks that are less than um, $1. The reason that I say that is because it's harder to manage a risk um, because this is a 30 cent stock, so that means for every one cent you lose, um, you're losing 3.33% um, in whatever it is that you know you have invested. So it becomes a little bit more difficult to manage, especially if you're a, a new trader and you don't understand the basics. This probably isn't the best stock to you know get started because you might get discouraged at a very early age. Um, but what it comes down to is um, this thing is a little bit more of a momentum suck. I think this is more um, overhyped. If it's coming from 20 cents and then it just shows that it's not holding very well, it's not consistently showing signs of upward momentum. It's really just like kind of like flatlining here. Um, and overall, like I, I see this to be more of like a dump. So during Monday, if we see a pullback, uh, we're most likely going to make our way back down to 20 cents. Uh, but just understand that it does bounce here at around 25 cents sometimes, and then it does bounce at the 28 support sometimes. So as long as one of the biggest things that I can suggest when it comes to trading, at least from my own experience, is you you don't necessarily. So I always try to buy at, on on pullbacks, right? Usually right as the market opens, there's some form of pullbacks. And actually, if we get a little bit closer here, um, you guys can see right as the market opens, it drops and then it starts rising. During this drop, it bounced at 25, so we know that that's a support, and it goes to highs, uh, let's say even just 30. From 25 to 30, that's 20% profit, if you can see this little calculator, um, even just at 30. So understanding that you know 25 is a support, you wait for the pullback, you don't necessarily buy at 25, but what I would suggest is at least something that has assisted me to you know invest in something that appreciates in value, rather than... You know, I end up losing money in is you want to wait for the pullback, but you want to wait for the bounce. So it's to start showing signs of upward momentum when it starts to bounce. So as you guys could see, you know, it had a pullback, it flatlines here at about 28, and then it starts showing signs of upward momentum. I would identify 29 to be a critical point. So when it breaks above 29, that's definitely showing signs of upward momentum. Um, and then in doing that, you know, there's going to be a resistance most likely at 30 cents because there was a previous resistance there. But with the right volume and with the right momentum, um, it looks like it broke right through it again, hitting the resistance at 35, which was a previous resistance um, a couple of days ago. So it comes down to the basics of understanding the support, the resistance where you're gonna stop loss out, but understanding that if you wanna invest in something, you wanna make sure that it's appreciating and showing signs that it's actually moving up rather than it going down. I feel like a lot of people um, get very anxious and end up just trying to buy in like, you know, when it has a little pullback, they tried to buy in at like 29 cents and then it continues to drop and then you end up having to stop loss out because you have to stick to your plan. So what I would suggest is wait more for the bounce, wait for it to start actually showing signs with this EMA line of upward momentum. Um, and if you can set up a plan that makes sense to you and you understand it, um, then you know, go for it. But other than that, that's really all I can really say about that specific stock. DCTH, I already know I don't like this one, but a lot of people um, always want to talk about this one. Um, so this one had a pullback all the way down to 18 cents, so we can identify that as a support. Um, it looks like it has a resistance again at 21 cents. So again, it hit 21 cents one, two, three times, and then sometimes during pre-market hours. So understanding that, yeah, it's had a pullback before, resistance there. So it looks like 21 and 20 is a pretty known, like, it looks like 20 is a pretty known support. So what that means is it usually bounces, uh, bounces and holds above 20, but then it started to almost flatline, and then that's what caused this drop. 
but then it bounced right back again i think a lot of this has to do with manipulation and momentum it's not necessarily something that i try to focus on it again it's less than a dollar so it's not something that i trade <coughs> i apologize rsi indicator is indicating that it's way on the over um it was on the way uh, on the over um, bot side so you know not a good purchase at this high point as you can tell it's more at a resistance area but if it has a pullback if it starts to you know flatline like how uh, how it's done before um, and it starts to like hold above $18 and then you see it start climbing back up you know set up a plan maybe you can buy in at like 18.5 stop loss out you know if it goes below 18 but still understand that's like you know that's 18.5 to that's already 3% so that's still a lot of money um, to risk especially for a stock that is pretty volatile so sometimes if the, if the volume is so you know quick, um, you might not even stop loss out at at you know 18 and actually stop loss out at like 17.5 because I want to make sure you guys understand a stop loss does not mean just because you set it at 18 that it will fill at 18. That's a stop limit. Um, but what it means is like once it goes below $18, it will sell at whatever the market value is. So if it drops so quickly that the price ends up, you know, going as far as like, you know, 17 cents or even 10 cents, whatever it is, if the momentum is so quick and by the time your order gets filled, the market price is at, you know, 17 or at 10 cents, then you will get filled at that. And then that's why I find these low cap stocks to be so risky. But, you know, with more risk, comes more reward within times but again just make sure you understand it one of the guys that i would recommend to reach out to when it comes to this um like, like these otc stocks or these um low cap stocks is um bradley um he's actually the group leader um for the otc stock group you guys can actually reach out to him you guys simply go here it's tech but solutions if you guys want to look into like the well, you know otc stocks um you guys go to the otc chat uh, feel free to join this um group um and then in doing that you guys could reach out to bradley he makes um feel free to subscribe to him he's going to start making more videos more often connor's more of a momentum trader so feel free to subscribe to him as well and these are all guys um within tech but solutions that are either group leaders or group mentors um and that you know i've brought in to be a part of um you know a tech Club solutions partner because i think you know the qualities and the best practices that they are sharing i uh, could be very very beneficial for the specific market that you know um they're capitalizing on so um i just want to let you know, let you guys know about that let me go ahead and go back to this poll so i just search a poll <clears throat> rad i like that you guys pulled up rad so the reason that Rad most likely came out in your guys' radar was that um, Rad was trading at about um, $4. It had a huge spike all the way to 485 but I think that has to do more with hyper manipulation. Um, it had an earnings call, so that has probably something to do with it. Had a huge drop, um, and within these drops, um, this I always talk about, and again, I don't mean to like you know repeat myself and bore you guys, but I always talk about that I like buying stocks um, that are red. So once the market opens and there's a huge drop, I usually like buying in when it starts to bounce to later sell for a profit. Uh, but if you guys see with rad, the thing that I don't like about it is that it's been showing signs of consistent downward momentum. It does show that it's like going up, but it's done that before during aftermarket hours. And then during pre-market hours, if it continues to show signs of downward trend, just know that if it breaks the support at, you know, 26 uh, two dollars and 61 cents that it's most likely going to continue showing signs of downward momentum so all i say is when it comes to trading anything just like this one like we can identify the support at um what is that about two <coughs> 275 and a resistance wow that's that's pretty funny i want to focus right here so based on what i see and i i wonder if you guys see it so support here for um not only for thursday but for friday as well um it did end up going a little bit below so that's the overall support that's two dollars and 61 cents um but it has another support here at two dollars and 75 cents so it broke above that and then held above 275 and then started showing signs of upward momentum hit a resistance at 290 which was a previous resistance as you guys can see here so again all i do is i analyze you know the stock see if I can identify potential. So based on the previous trend, right now it's more at the resistance. So what I would like to see is during the market open, I would like to see a pullback and then a bounce at around $2.75 or at $2.61 for it to start trending up. And then once it breaks above 275, I can make this decision, you know, if I want to, to buy in at around 276, once it breaks above 275, sell out around 290 because I understand that that's been the resistance twice. Um, so, and again, identifying my buy point, my sell point, and as well as understanding that 275 is a support. So I would stop loss if it goes below, you know, 270 or something like that. Therefore, I'm managing my risk. Um, I'm keeping my losses at about one to one and a half percent. 
Um, so that's my percentage um, risk for loss. But my percentage for profit is about 5.85% from um, 275 to 290. So my potential for profit is much greater than my potential for loss. And if that risk is worth it for you, again, managing your risk, if it makes sense to you, um, and you can set up a proper plan, um, then that's how I come down to, you know, okay, well, I, I would feel comfortable investing in this. And again, this is Rite Aid, so this is not a penny stock, uh, but they haven't been doing well um, with, based on what I've seen uh, within the past couple of months. So that's that's all I'm saying. It does look like it has it has been sold. Therefore, this RSI indicator is saying that it's you know more on the it's more on the good purchase price. So it's hopefully gonna you know move back up. But again. You don't rely on hope, you rely on if you want to day trade this, then you set up a plan and, and how you're going to trade it. So just stick to your plan, see if you identify potential. And if you guys do, um, just be sure, be sure to share it within the Facebook group and you know get a secondhand opinion on what people think. Um, but again, only trade on what you, know, you solely believe on and what you solely understand. Um, but it's always nice to hear like you know someone else's opinion on, on their own experience and stuff like that. So CHFS. <coughs> Okay, so I went from 50 cents. I actually scanned for the stock. I remember I was um, at, at the Barcelona airport. I was talking about, I made a video um, within my YouTube channel on um, how to build a scanner, you know, to find the best penny stocks. And it comes down to finding like a pre-market scanner. So based on the previous close, on you know how much during pre-market hours it's trending up and stuff like that. It trended up very high during pre-market hours, saw a huge pullback, it bounced right away to that same resistance at 160 and then saw a huge drop. So I think this has to do more with a pump and dump. Um, other than that, there's no real true support or resistance. It looks like it's really just trying to hold above $1. If you guys can see here, this is the $1 mark. And if it does hold above $1, then again, set up a plan. If there's a $1 support, there's most likely gonna be a resistance at $1.10. Um, and if you set up a plan that makes sense to you that your you know potential for profit is much greater than your potential for loss. Um, but overall, I don't like trading stocks that are uh, you know most likely manipulated and it's really close to that one dollar um, price point that it was previously uh, previously at like you know sixty to fifty cents. And therefore, I think it has you know the potential to have, see a huge drop. Um, if there's a huge seller and um, I might not get filled with my stop loss where I want to. So I personally, I'm not going to be trading um, CHFS. IDXG. Actually, I think I was looking at this one. Okay, so it's had a huge drop. It's been holding at above 85 cents, uh, but it's not really trending up yet. So it's had a huge drop from um, $1.60. Right now, it's a little bit below $1.00. Um, so it's, it has a resistance, as you guys can tell, at 90 cents, a support right around 86 cents. Um, that's really just it. That's so funny how they hold so well. Um, so again, support at around 85 cents. So you guys can see it, it bounces here numerous times. It has gone below, but not much below. Um, and then there's a resistance at about 90 cents. So it usually has a drop down to you know um, 85, resistance at 90. So the potential for profit is about 5.38% from top to bottom. Um, and then if you, you know, stop loss out at like, you know, 83 cents, since it doesn't usually go much below, much below that, um, that's a 2% risk with a almost 6% potential for profit. So that, <coughs> that is it on that. Um, I do apologize that I keep coughing. I really don't mean to, um, interrupt the kind of live stream at that. Um, after my trip from Spain, just because of the climate change, um, I felt a little sick, so I don't. That is really just it. So I'm going to start answering some of your guys' questions. So that was pretty much the whole analysis portion on the stocks that you guys recommended. If you guys want me to analyze um, stocks later on um, or for this upcoming um, Sunday stock talk for this next week, um, please, again, once I put up that poll option, just stay tuned for that um, and put up your own option of what it is that you guys you know want, me, want to recommend for me to analyze, and that's going to be the best way for me to actually do it. So... Um, your guys' questions and then go from there. A decent conversation about, you know, stocks yourself. Um, I've seen a lot of conversations within the group chats um, and it looks like you guys are doing pretty well. So cryptocurrencies, um, we do have a cryptocurrency um, 
group chat within TechWood Solutions. It's not a verified group chat, so it's not one that I um, share publicly. I do know there's a couple people that are still within that group. It's not extremely active. There's like a couple hundred people within that group. If you guys would like, and just let me know, so um, you guys can direct message me or comment down below, but if you guys would like me to establish this cryptocurrency group chat, I just want to make sure that I have one moderator that I believe in that can um, fully express, you know, what it is that we want within TechWood Solutions, and that's just, you know, um, to help one another out, promote, you know, a a safe and, and like, motive just a supportive environment within within the group chat um, and to share best practices and to share mistakes so <clears throat> i actually like that idea so jake shepherd says next time analyze your picks um, i really like giving you guys a voice um, so the best way to do that is to kind of just put out a poll and hear what you or, or really just do what you guys want me to analyze um, but if you guys want um, after i answer these questions i'll analyze two stocks that i'm going to be looking at for this upcoming week um, and, and talking about that. So AMD, Tone, Sprague, um, that's actually probably one of the stocks that I was going to analyze, and I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about that. So I'm not too sure if you guys uh, watched. I'm not sure if it was last Sunday Stock Talk or the week before. Um, <coughs> I think it was actually the last one. Um, I talked about AMD, and it was hitting a resistance at like $14 or $14.50. And based on the previous trends, I won't talk too much about it because I'm going to talk about it in just a little bit. But I called out that there's most likely going to be a pullback all the way down to $12 or $12.50. And we were almost right on the dollar. It ended up bouncing at like $2.50, and then it started trending up. And in the, like with the RSI and everything that's indicating on like long term for AMD, since it's not a penny stock, it actually shows pretty promising. But again, I'll talk about it, and you guys let me know what you guys think. Um, so Jake Shepard gives me the thumbs up. Appreciate that. Um, so some of you guys are suggesting. Um, <laughs> some of you guys are suggesting um, different stocks right now. I've already analyzed a series of stocks, so just wait till the video is posted. Since I've already answered some of the ones that you guys are asking about. So uh, Jacob Johnson says, "Ricky, you are a boss. Appreciate that, man." That's a good idea. Um, throwing a couple of your picks off your watch list. I actually like that idea. So um, if anything, I'll pick like the top, you know, three stocks next week um, that you guys choose, and then I'll analyze two of my stocks because I feel like you guys really just like a lot of you guys end up trading like not even what what it is that I talk about, but based on the feedback that I've received. Um, when I perform my technical analysis and during my live streams, the reason that I get so many people to tune in is not because they're trading what I'm trading or because they want to hear exactly what it is that I have to say, but you guys just, based on what I've heard, is you guys think that I explain or believe that I explain, you know, this whole technical analysis and how to identify potential uh, very easily. Um, and I think, um, I personally think um, that a lot of it has to do with when I trade, I love having like one of my buddies with me um, and being able to have someone to talk to me, even if I'm not really paying attention to him, just makes the whole experience of day trading that much better. So I'm not too sure if that's what you guys feel just because a lot of you guys are each trading individually. Um, but I'm so glad that you guys tune in, um, you know, every morning pre-market hours, um, which we go live in um, and, and you guys just tune in, ask questions, and then we trade together. That's probably one of the coolest things that I enjoy about, you know, um, my hobby of, of day trading, so I really do appreciate it. All right. So um, Deputy Lopez says, can you do a video about recognizing patterns in candlesticks? Um, I have made a video specifically talking about, you know, common trends, um, and I put out a chart. Um, I'm not too sure if that's going to be one that I, um, that's going to answer your question, uh, but if you guys want me to talk about um, a little bit more about trends and stuff like that, I'd be more than happy to kind of make a new updated video on that specific topic. Can you give me some money, like 20K or something? I apologize, man. We're not here to just give away free money for no reason. So, But you're more than welcome to work hard and, you know, Something that I always encourage, if you guys don't have money, you guys need money to make money. Um, so having a stable income and then working off of that and, um, you know, looking at different sources of income and how you guys can make money on top of what you guys are already making. So I hope that helps you out. So how many trends, patterns um, do you use before? So um, when, it, when it comes to like 
that pretty much is asking me like do I just solely rely on support and resistance or do I look for actually trends and patterns so I look for individual trends and patterns um, in individual stocks I don't um, there's a lot of people that go off you know just the famous like nine patterns I think there are on like you know the double top double bottom um, uh, and, and I'm very familiar with those specific you know trends so that's always I always say it's like the more you know the better you'll do right so the more you're aware of these trends and that's why I encourage you guys that if you guys know of a series of trends um, that have assisted you because you were able to identify them and led to your success because you're locked in profits and then all of a sudden once you sold you know it took a dip um, whatever it is share it within the group because you know although it might be you know something that might come second nature to you guys um, it might not be something that you know John Smith within the group uh, might actually know so so um, it is something that I'm familiar with. I do try to focus on individual trends and patterns within that specific stock, such as AMD. Um, I just saw a trend that it continued to like, you know, um, have huge increases and then it had a huge pullback and then it was going on at a consistent rate. Um, so again, I identified a pattern or a trend. Um, I stuck to the, the basics of support and resistance, setting up a plan, being patient and only you know trading when it's in my favor and stuff like that. So. Oh, you guys are. Oh, as Florida, I'm gonna um, block you right now. Just, be, I'm gonna put you in timeout, um, just because you're being a little annoying. Fast when you're selling penny stocks. This is by Nelson uh, Jossen. Um, so, you know, trading. You should always have a plan before jumping in. And at least one in your head if you don't have one written out, because when you're trading penny stocks or lower cap stocks, you have to be very quick. Um, so understanding that every time that I buy it, if you guys look at any of my live streams, some of you guys ask why don't um, I ever show like my screen of when I'm actually trading on the TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim. It's because I'm actually not trading on TD Ameritrade. I use that for the real-time quotes, but I'm trading on my app for Fidelity. Um, and right as I get filled, I always, always, if you guys ever see when I get filled, I always go ahead and I set my stop loss right away because I want to make sure that every time that I buy in, that I manage my risk. So the best way to do that is every time that I get filled, I'm buying because I think it's, you know, trending upwards, but all of a sudden if it takes a dip, I want to make sure that I can cut my losses. So that's the most important thing for me to do. Um, and doing that, once it starts trending up and hits a, a certain point that it starts, you know, that I, I'm willing to like lock in profits there, I'll put a stop loss there. And then once it hits the resistance, I'll put a limit order there. So it comes like second nature. But again, you do have to get familiar on how to do it. If you don't, aren't comfortable with you know setting order types um, or if you aren't familiar with a different order type setting limit orders and, and doing it and it becoming second nature then I'd get a little bit more familiar with that whole platform and the best way to do it is I always recommend just because I don't want you guys to risk money when you guys don't have to um, and it's the TD Ameritrade paper trading you know platform and you know I, that's all I just recommend just because I don't want you guys to lose money when you guys are learning and I don't want you guys to get discouraged so the best way to do it is when there's no real monetary risk but real real world experience and real-time quotes um, and that's yeah that's pretty much it um, Free your dollar says, what is your stop um, stop loss? One or two percent. So it really depends on what it is that I'm trading. If it's more of a like AMD, I would be more on the two to three percent risk, um, just because it's it's not necessarily as a risky you know stock because it's not a penny stock. But it, when it comes down to a penny stock, I try to cut losses uh, pretty quick. I'm much I, I'm a much more conservative trader, and based on the feedback that I've received, it's very negative based on you know people that and such watch my videos because they don't understand why I stop loss out um, you know so quickly or, or why I always cut my losses so quickly it's just based on how I trade um, I'm very conservative with my trades I tend to see more of a success rate when it comes to cutting losses quickly and locking in profits um, and that that's just my style if you guys don't understand it you guys don't have to do it um, it's just something that what works for me um, and that's why I talk about it but I always tell you guys you know do what it is that you know is working for you guys um, and then share it and that's really just it <laughs> Brad Curtis is analyze your own struck with boy all right uh, you guys can leave him alone dude. you guys don't have to bother um, but thank you I appreciate you guys all taking your time to do that uh, chat ad says do you put both limit order and stop loss um, to get filled no I usually just put stop loss and then my limit order uh, Rodrigo says do I speak Spanish I do speak Spanish oh anchors and anvil studios actually um, for Raboy 
or, or Raybo, um, he wanted you to analyze BIOS or BIO. Um, Anchors and Anvils actually did it for you, and he said there's not much there. So, so um, Stephen Lewis says, how do I gain discipline and less um, and lessening and lessening exposure time? Um, <coughs> I think it really comes down to um, you have to understand that for a lot of people, it does take quite a while um, to actually get these basics and, and the fundamentals down when it comes to trading penny stocks or, or just to start trading stocks um, because it is some somewhat, I, I feel, based on the feedback that I've received from people, um, it's very hard for them to take it seriously and very hard for them to um, really understand what stocks are because it's not like a materialistic thing that you invest in, like, you know, this house or anything like that. It's, it's very new for a lot of people. Um, but, you know, once you take it serious and once you set up these certain rules that, you know, um, have led to your success and then you don't do what, you know, has led to loss um, and you just set up this whole kind of game plan on how to be successful based on your own experience. Um, sticking to that, treating it more as a job, treating it more serious, I think has led to the success of a lot of people. And again, it comes down to the basics of, you know, doing what you do good and not, and, you know, sharing your mistakes so no one else has to repeat them. So that's really just it. <laughs> Why do I look like I'm 19 um, or so? By the way, that's a compliment. I'm 22 years old. I know I have a really young face, and I have, like, very little to no facial hair. So I think that has a lot to do with it. But, yeah, I know I do look very young. My dad was the same way as well. Yeah, um, all right, so you guys are asking me to do another video on patterns and such, so I appreciate that. I'll be sure to you know, do that. I'll add that to my YouTube um, helpful video needs list. Okay, so Jake Shepard says, I see you also used um, the mobile um, version of kind of TD Ameritrade. Um, what app or what studio? It's called Trader. So you get to, it's on the Apple Store um, or the App Store, and it's just called Trader. It's a green app. Um, and I've shared it many times with you guys, so it's one that I really like to use when it comes to analyzing stocks. But again, when it comes to execution, I don't use TD Ameritrade, I use Fidelity. I like managing risk. That's Jacob Johnson. I appreciate that. I, I like to do that too. So Ricky, tips and thoughts on custodial accounts. It's actually never been easier to set them up, um, especially a lot of new brokerage companies are actually offering that. Um, so I'm saying if, if you guys are trying to get started at an early age or under the age of 18, um, or you guys want to sign up your kids to kind of get started when it comes to trading penny stocks, as I've received a couple emails on that. Um, I would start off with more of a simulation or paper trading account for a young individual um, because I think not only does it take, you know, just the fundamentals of learning, but kind of like um, the mindset. And I think the more they expose themselves to like our community of motivated like individuals and entrepreneurs, um, the better they'll become and the more, you know, just second nature will become for them. So it does take time, but it definitely is possible. It looks like you guys are all answering, like there's a bunch of people asking me specific questions and the people that always tune into my live streams are answering them all. So Chad, I appreciate that. Uh, Anchors and Anvils, I appreciate that. You guys are doing doing amazing. Um, so I'm going to answer one more question and then kind of go from there. <coughs> How to force girlfriend to start trading. Um I don't know if you guys saw the video that I was doing about swing trading, but my girlfriend just ended up not wanting to do it. Um, she thought that she was too busy and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. So, Pro uh, Protein Narg says, do you have any Excel sheets to manage and slash reward? Um, if you go on the Techbook Solutions Facebook platform on that little search bar on the left-hand corner, um, search up. Um, it's called the – what is it called? It's called the Growth Plan – um, growth plan Excel sheet and it's actually made by me so feel free to click on and download that Excel sheet and it has a little option on how you guys can actually calculate and manage your risk okay so I'm, I'm gonna just scones or muffins <laughs> uh, muffins see these are hilarious if you guys could see I'm super tired I'm gonna end it with this um, I'm gonna start analyzing AMD 
and then one more stock um, and then we're gonna end it right there guys uh, but I just want to tell you guys like I'm super exhausted it's been nonstop like traveling I was in California earlier this morning I'm back here in Arizona um, and it's gonna be an exciting week I'm definitely glad to be back I really missed my roommates like these guys I I don't know if I've introduced each and every one each and every roommate to you guys but the guys that I live with are, are just amazing and one of the biggest things is like my uber driver when she was driving me back here to uh, my house was like it's funny to see that you're so like you know excited to come back from a vacation in spain and you just wanted to come back so you can get back to work and stuff like that and it, i it really came down to like i explained it to her it's like you know i felt it was more of a sacrifice to actually go over there for two weeks other than seeing my girlfriend that was like you know an amazing thing but um just really leaving for two weeks and just struggling to to kind of like not be here and in my comfort zone with you guys and with my developers and with everything it is that I have going on. Um, it just, it's so nice just to be back and I just love what it is that I do. And it's an, it's an amazing thing. And I, and I think a lot of you guys for a lot of people, they don't look forward to Monday. They don't, don't look forward to the weekdays. It's probably one of the most exciting times for me. I actually don't look forward to the weekends um, because I work a lot more um, when it comes to like the other businesses that I have that, I don't necessarily enjoy as much as, you know, trading or tech buttons and stuff like that. So um, thank you guys. I, I just wanted to take the time, especially since it's like the 4th of July and stuff like that. Um, just spend time with your family. I hope you guys have an amazing time um, and just continue doing what you guys love and, you know, success will follow from that. And it, it doesn't come, you know, just continue working hard. Um, my girlfriend does not live in Spain. She's studying abroad. <clears throat> I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Let's do this. <coughs> All righty, so 248. All right, let me talk to you guys about the trend that I was talking to you guys about. So now we're gonna to have to go for the back. 180 day analysis. This is the trend, and if you guys saw, I put these lines, um, it was last week. Um, I believe, and it had a huge pullback. So AMD had a huge drop from about um, $13.50 all the way down to um, $10 or a little bit below $10. It started trending up and it started seeing these like little spikes, right? Um, and with these little spikes, every time that it had a spike, it had a decent pullback. Um, and then it started to rise again, again, a pullback, it started to rise again. And then what happened again? Um, it had this huge rise, it was at $14.50, and that was a couple days ago. And what the team asked me what it is that I thought about AMD. Did I think it was going to continue to rise? I was like, well, based on these pre, again, not hoping for the best, but I'm trying to understand based on previous trends, what most likely will happen. Again, not 100% sure, but most likely what will happen. Well, if the past two times it trended up and then saw a downward trend, trended up and then saw a pullback, this fourth time, you know, it trended up, hit a little bit higher than it did before, and now it's, you know, it saw this pullback. It's starting to flatline, as you guys can see right here, um, and based on this trend line that it's been continuing, um, it does still have some room to continue, you know, seeing some downward trend. Um, I think the lowest they'll probably get is about $12 before it starts trending back up. Uh, but again, you're never 100% sure. If you guys see when it sees these downward trends, um, the RSI shows that it's more on the um, oversold side, um, just like it did here. Um, and it's showing that sign again right here. And this is again, 100 day, 180 day analysis. So when it comes to understanding, if you guys want to day trade this, um, with, with the past couple of days, it has had decent spikes, meaning that it does have margins for profit based on previous trends. It identified the support or its you know overall support at around twelve dollars and fifty cents, which is something that I called out, um, and a resistance at about um, twelve dollars and seventy cents. Why is it twelve dollars and seventy cents? Well, that's this point right here, and that was a previous support. Again, old supports become new resistance levels. Um, and once it went above 270, it didn't hold very well, and then saw a downward trend. Again, went above 170 or 1270, and then saw a downward trend. I uh, started bouncing that around um, this. Again, it did go a little bit below um, 1250, but five cents for a $12 stock isn't really much. Um, so support somewhat at above, you know, 1240. Um, and then it started trending back up again struggled to go above 1270 um, But it had this margin of profit of about 2% nothing huge But I'm just saying it does have margin for profit it is holding above this 240 support again overall 244 to 243 um, and then a slight resistance at 250 as we know like old supports become new resistance levels So you would only expect that uh, based on the usual market open 
within the past couple of days. It has been showing during once the market does open, it sees a downward trend and then bounces up. Um, and then again, market open, sees a downward trend and then bounces up. So what would you most likely expect? Well, it's most likely based on the past couple of days, hopefully going to start trending back up. But again, we want to make sure that we don't just hope for it, that it actually starts doing it and that different indicators start showing that it starts bouncing. So you guys could use like EMA lines and there's just a bunch of other indicators that you guys can utilize. to start showing that it's actually bouncing um, and the volume should be picking up a little bit more. Um, but other than that, um, it really comes down to the basics of support and resistance. And if you guys want to day trade it, just catching it at the bounce and then selling for profit, but knowing the importance of having a plan. Um, and that's really just it. Once it breaks above $13, um, I'm actually going to set my alert on that. I plan to actually most likely trade this one on Monday um, if I can catch it at the bounce. Um, but I'm really interested to see um, on how AMD opens this morning, um, on Monday morning. The reason why is if it starts trending back down, then we're most likely going to see that, okay, most likely we'll try to bounce at about $12 if it continues to see show signs of downward trend. Um, but if it starts trending back up, I think that we can make our way back up um, to about like thirteen fifty to fourteen dollars, um, based on you know previous resistance. And if anything, based on the previous trends, um, has anything to show for it, um, on this next bounce, maybe we can actually get to this fifteen dollar resistance. Since every you know spike, it's been continuing. So every spike, if you guys could see, you know the first spike that it had, um, it hit highs of about three ten. Um, the second spike, it hit highs of about three forty, and then the third spike, it hit highs of you know um. 482 so it continued to rise right so that's what you want to see so in this bounce it's most likely gonna you know break based on the previous trend um, make new highs um, and in that new high um, it's about $15 if not 1560 based on you know previous resistance as you guys can see there um, and that's really just it that's pretty simple <coughs> let me see the other one that I was watching was and it was actually due to one of my buddies that um, his name's Kyle and he called this one out um, and it was the support that this one had at eight dollars, and um, it had a what the heck? No, it wasn't this one. Where is it? Goodness. Was it Fred? I, I'm gonna <coughs> I'm gonna have to take another look, so I'll post it within the group chat once I find it on the stock that I was actually looking at. Um I have it I have it written down somewhere on the stocks that I was focusing on. I think it was this one, um, because I had a support at nine dollars. Yeah, it was this one. I apologize. Um, so based on this this huge pullback that it had from thirteen dollars, um, we identified the support at nine dollars, and we called this one out thanks to you guys uh, during our one of our live streams during pre market hours. Ended up bouncing at nine dollars and hit highs of ten seventy or ten seventy seven, right? Yeah. Um, and then from top to bottom, it saw like you know, an almost twenty percent profit from top to bottom. It started you know slowly showing signs of downward momentum. Um, but as long as we hold above nine dollars, it's all gravy from there. Um, and most likely expect a resistance at 950, but it does have a really nice, I think, margin for profit. And it's very simple to understand when it comes to like, you know, the support at nine dollars, since that's initially where it bounced that right. So stop lossing if it goes below 896 or regardless of what it is. Um, understanding that the resistance is like about um, 950. So there's a margin for profit from nine dollars. Um, let's say 905 to 950 of about five percent with a potential for loss if you get at 905 um, let's see right there and then you stop loss out at 896 I didn't even calculate it but it should be about one to 1.2 uh, percent so um, that's pretty much it guys thank you guys again for you're off Give me like two minutes, two minutes. All right, we're gonna go some stuff. All right, sounds good. Um, one of my buddies is actually leaving for 4th of July, so that's pretty bad. Um, so, Smoothie125 is asking, Ricky, do you know the whole story about Fred's stock? Um, no, so if you, you're, if you wanna share it, feel free to comment um, 
right now in the live stream and what you know about it. I'd be more than happy to hear your opinion on it. Um, but it's just, again, um, I really just set up a plan when it comes to trading. I know not all the stocks that I invest in um, are the best companies or the best um, stocks, um, but it comes down to identifying potential, setting up a plan, and if it makes sense to you guys uh, when it comes to trading, it only needs to make sense to you. There's nothing wrong with hearing someone else's opinion, uh, but make sure that you're the final decision maker on what it is that you choose to invest in and never trade based on anyone else's opinion. So, um, so um, last question is, um, once the next time that I'm going live, I'm going to be going live during pre-market hours um, tomorrow morning. Um, and, and that's really just it. I believe we have Tuesday off. So make sure you guys have fun with your guys' family. Um, and, and that's that's it. Um, but I want to thank you guys again all for tuning in. I know I did take um, a couple minutes of your guys' time, about 45 minutes. Um, so I really do appreciate um, everything it is that you guys do. Um, and, you know, just can. All, all I want to say is like I'm super excited for this upcoming weekend. I, I know my just emotions aren't really um, expressing, out, and I'm pretty kind of like um, monotone. Um, but I'm really tired. I, I'm going to try to catch up on some rest. I just have a couple things that I have to um, have to do. Uh, but overall, when it comes to like the final words is like when it comes to investing, you guys have to understand that you guys need to dedicate a lot of time to identifying potential. That's one of the biggest things. If you guys are scanning for stocks, if that's your thing, if you're a momentum trader, focus on that. If you're more of a technical trader and you go through your watch list and you perform a technical analysis on every single watch list, I say if you're not dedicating at least 15 to 30 minutes every single day to identify potential and setting up a plan for a series of stocks that you want to focus on, for pre-market hours, then you're not probably putting in enough time to dedicate to make this an actual career that you can profit off of. Um, you guys are doing an amazing job just helping one another out. Um, and I wanna give you guys all that credit. All the comments that you guys, you know, all the time that you guys take out of your day to share what you guys did good, you know, share your profits and share your losses and, and share what you guys did bad. It's, it's all about networking. It's all about learning from one another's best practices and mistakes and the importance of that because the impact that we have on the you know, thousands of people that are within our community is, I think, a truly an amazing thing. I, I've never received so many thank you emails, um, or I don't know if I just had a lot to catch up on when I came back from my trip from Spain, um, but it, it's just so humbling to hear, you know, how how just the simple concept and the simple platform that I created is allowing people to, you know, dedicate less time to their normal jobs um, and still understand the importance of having a stable income so they still keep them. Uh, but understanding that a lot of people are now making enough money when it comes to day trading that they can, you know, focus a little bit more on what it is that they enjoy doing, um, you know, on their families, on traveling, whatever it is that you guys love doing. Just continue um, to remember that, you know, if you guys want to do this long term, there's a lot of time that you guys need to dedicate. You guys need to make sure that you guys treat this as serious as possible um, and, you know, just network. And, and that's really just it. So um, I'm going to dedicate a little bit of time, like once this live stream is over, to answer some of the questions within the live stream. And if anything, we can bring this conversation over um, to the group chat within Tech Fund Solutions. But um, be sure if you haven't done so already, watch the previous videos that I uploaded this week. I think a lot of you guys can benefit from the um, how to build a scanner within the TD Ameritrade ThinkOrSwim platform. Um, and also the video that I uploaded yesterday with my buddy um, Graham. So I really do appreciate all your guys' support. Um, it's a, it's a true blessing to have each and every one of you guys um, in our team uh, as such motivated like entrepreneurs. I can't thank you guys enough. And I always, I know I always say that, but um, I, I really hope you guys understand that me as just like, you know, an average Joe, um, having you guys to support me and everything is that I pursue is definitely a true motivation. So I hope that you guys feel the same way when it comes to, you know, having my support and everything it is that you guys want to pursue and that you have the whole tech, but solutions team with you as well. Um, so like always guys, um, let's continue working as hard as we can and um, work towards ending the year on a green note. That was a little different. All right. Uh, thank you guys. And uh, happy 4th of July almost. Take care.